Much of the pleasure of events like this one comes from being able to acknowledge the help and the support of the many people who support the work that we do, not only tonight, but throughout the year. We were very fortunate in this regard at the Shoah Foundation, and our luck has continued now that we have become the USC Shoah Foundation Institute. Over the years, the Turner Network Television has been about as consistent a supporter and sponsor as any organization could want. Similarly, our dear friends at Bulgari have supported this event from the first time that we did it, and have again this year provided the beautiful Ambassadors for Humanity Award that Steven Spielberg will present to Wallace Annenberg later this evening. Jerry Seinfeld has supported our work not only by his presence tonight, but also as a donor and friend of very, very long standing. Don Henley and his band will be playing for us later. They bring something to the evening that no one else could. And each of you, each of you, just by being here, has shown your support for our mission. To all of you, on behalf of the 52,000 men and women whose precious testimonies we have collected, I say thank you. I didn't intend that as an applause line, but I'll take it. A little bit more than a year ago, survivors of the Shoah Visual History Foundation became the USC Shoah Foundation Institute for Visual History and Education. And we moved from a ragtag collection of trailers that some of you saw at Universal Studios to the magnificent Levy Library here at USC. As an institution, USC has long shared and embraced the humane commitments of the Shoah Foundation. Joining this great university has permitted us to amplify and to expand those commitments as we would not otherwise have been able to do. To President Stephen Sample, to Provost Max Nikias, to Dean Peter Starr, and to all of our new colleagues at USC, I know I speak for everyone who is associated with the Shoah Foundation when I express our deep gratitude for welcoming us so warmly to USC and for making us feel so quickly and so completely a part of the great Trojan family. There could be no better academic home for the Shoah Foundation Institute than the University of Southern California, and we feel fortunate every day to be here. It is fitting, too, that we should honor Wallace Annenberg at this first Ambassadors for Humanity dinner in our new home. For it was Wallace who, in, with typical vision and generosity, could see the significance of what the Shoah Foundation and USC planned to do together and supported it at a critical moment. Wallace, Stephen will be singing your praises in a few minutes. For now, I want only to say that it has been an honor for me to work with you these past few years and to have the benefit of your wisdom and your support. All of us here are in your debt not only for what you have done for this organization and for this organization and, and for this university, but for our city, our country, and our world. Thirteen years ago, a small group of dedicated young people, or at least they were young then, led by June Beeler, James Mall, and Ari Zev, began work on a project inspired by a great film, Schindler's List, and a great filmmaker, Steven Spielberg. The collection and eventual dissemination on video of 50,000 testimonies of eyewitnesses to and survivors of the Holocaust. No one had ever done anything like it before. The challenges the task presented were legion. The possibility of failure was real. The potential for success palpable, but difficult to grasp. Today, almost exactly 13 years later to the day, that project has become the USC Shoah Foundation Institute, and it holds 52,000 testimonies in 32 languages, collected in 56 countries, almost 120,000 hours of ordinary human faces and ordinary human voices describing survival in the most extraordinary and inhuman of circumstances. 
No one who has been associated with this work over the years could fail to have been changed by the experience. The testimonies in our archive are now entirely digital and entirely searchable. It is as easy to search them at a dozen other universities and institutions around the world as it is here at USC. It's difficult for me to describe the emotions I felt when last December I participated in the opening of our archive at the Free University of Berlin, virtually within sight of the Wannsee Villa, where in January of 1942, Hitler's henchmen confirmed their intention to murder every Jew in the world. In addition, the Shoah Foundation Institute has produced 11 documentary films in eight languages, a raft of educational materials that are, use, are in use in this country and in the original languages in other countries around the world. And we have also trained hundreds of teachers to use visual history in their classrooms. At least two million students in 40 countries have seen and heard what only survivors of the Holocaust can tell. We think we've done a lot in 13 years, and we are proud of what we have accomplished. But we have only begun to realize Stephen's original dream, and we are only too conscious of how much more lies ahead of us. Our mission commands us to overcome intolerance, prejudice, and bigotry, and that is what we try to do every day. But the Holocaust is only one horrifying representation of that evil. And anti-Semitism is but a single example of a much more profound danger that threatens us all. Violence and racism are the twin scourges of, human life, of modern life. Our commitment is to combat them wherever and however we can, and no matter who the victims are. Around the world tonight, these forces of destruction demand our urgent attention. We cannot always do as much as we would wish to fight the evils that inhabit our world, but we must never forget them. We, each of us in this room, have an obligation of memory. At the Shoah Foundation Institute, the preservation of memory is what we do, but our obligation to remember is not and cannot only be an obligation to remember the Holocaust. The obligation to remember is a moral responsibility that all of us owe to all those who have suffered from the violence and the racism of the modern world, whether they are Jews or Armenians or Cambodians or Rwandans or Darfuris who survived genocides or men and women in South Africa still living in the aftermath of apartheid and the struggle to destroy it, or African Americans who remember life in a viciously segregated society that had the temerity to call itself a democracy. There can be no higher calling no more compelling way to create meaning in our lives than to record and to preserve their memories and those of other victims of racist violence. Forgetting them would be to murder them again. To that end, the Shoah Foundation Institute tonight initiates an important new phase in its development. Our work on the Holocaust will continue, but we plan to join it now to the work of collaborating with others around the world to record and to disseminate the memory, memories of other people who have been the target of history's most vile impulses. <laughs> Whoever those people may be and wherever they may live, with generous support from some of you in this room, we have begun very promising conversations with friends and colleagues in South Africa, in Rwanda, and in Cambodia, but the work is vast, the work is essential, and the work is global. It may take us back to Europe, or to Latin America, or to Asia, or to Africa, or it may take us to the Indian reservations and streets of our own country. But at the USC Shoah Foundation Institute, we know that we have a unique opportunity, an opportunity no other generation in human history has had to record the faces and the voices of ordinary men and women for whom racism and violence are not vague, abstract historical shadows, but dark and painfully lived experience. Men and women whose life stories of seen and heard can change the world. Men and women whose fundamental identity is not Jewish or Christian or Muslim, not black or white or brown, 
but profoundly and completely human. This is the work to which we are dedicated, and it is the work in which we hope to enlist your encouragement and your support, not only because memory matters tonight, but because memory so deeply and so significantly matters to the entire human future. Yet memory that is recorded but unrevealed is not memory at all, it is forgetting. Fortunately, the world is full of young people for whom the recovery of memory is an essential part of their education. And some of them are students at USC. I was lucky enough to work with a group of them in a course that I taught last fall, and it is my very great pleasure, therefore, to introduce three students who grasped an opportunity not only to remember, but to share that memory with the wider world, an opportunity we at the USC Shoah Foundation Institute plan to extend to thousands and, we hope, millions of others. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my very great pleasure to introduce Darian Lopez, Rahim Parpia, and Emily Intersimone. 